Let's now do more GUnit test cases to reinforce your understanding. Especially, we got two versions of the equals method. Either the default version from the object class that's inherited to point v1, or we got the overridden version of the equals method that's defined in uh, point v2. We want to see exactly which one is being called and what the uh, what the consequence is for the assertion. That's uh, something we would like to uh, to make sure we got very clear. Okay, I got three test cases over here, but I'm going to go over on my iPad one by one. And for one of them, I also want to show you exactly how it works on the, ecl uh, on the Eclipse. Okay. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so the first one is uh, it's simply just called test equality of point V1, meaning that we're going to focus on just the point V1 over here. If you remember, that one there, it's definitely a sub or child class of the object class, and it inherits this particular version of the equals method, right? So this is the uh, default version that will be used when we discuss. Okay, so that'll be the default version. Okay, that's inherited. Let's now take a look. And we also visualize the objects just, just to help us. Okay, so here we got P1. Oh, too thick. We got P1 and also we got P2. Over here, you can see we got P1, we got P2. And their dynamic, uh, their dynamic types is simply point V1 and also point V1, right? You can see exactly how to figure out their dynamic type. Just look for the constructor after the new keyword. So new point V1, that's dynamic type for P1. New, uh, also point V1. So that's a dynamic type for the objects pointed by P2. Okay, so far so good. And then let's, let's fill it out. Three, four, and also three, four. So three, four, and also three, four. Okay, so far so good. And let's see some very simple assertion. If I assert false, P1 equals equals P2. What's P1 equals equals P2? Well, obvious, P1 and P2, they're of different uh, object addresses. Of course, they're pointing to different objects. So this expression here should be false. And since we're asserting false, so that one is going to pass. Okay, check. What about P2 equals equals P1? Similar, it's going to return false because P2 and P1, they're pointing to different objects. And since we're asserting false, so it's going to pass. On the other hand, what you can do is, which I uh, suggested over here, you can try it out on your, on your Eclipse. If you say assert same and then P1, P2, or you try assert same P2, P, uh, P2, comma P1, in that case, you're going to fail for both because this one will boil down into P1 equals equals p2 and this one will boil, boil down into p2 equals equals p1 and both will actually fail right both both will evaluate to false okay let's now see the second one or the next one actually so if i say assert false p1 dot equals p2 okay so now which version of the equals method are we going to call it depends on the dynamic type for the context objects which is p1 p1 has the dynamic type over here right so that means we're going to call this version of the cons of the uh, equals method as default, and which will boil down into this one will boil down into p1 equals equals p2. So this is the default from objects, right? We actually explained this point uh, in the earlier example as well, but you know it's good to always good to repeat just to reinforce. So what should that be? Well, apparently P1 and P2 pointing to different objects, so it's going to be false. And we're asserting false. So apparently that's going to pass. So check. Similarly, if we do, if we swap the order of the arguments and the uh, context objects, in this case, it's not going to make a difference because P2 over here, the context object is also of dynamic type point V1 meaning that we're still going to invoke this default version of the construct uh, of the uh, equals method. So that will uh, also boil down into over here. That will also boil down into P2 equals equals P1. And this really comes from the same default version of the uh, equals method from the object class, right? So P2 equals equals P1, of course, is going to be false. Okay? So this is going to give you false. And since you assert false, so it's going to pass. All right, let's do a little bit more. I can also say, well, let's say here, because there's no overridden version for 
the point v1 equals method. So the best we can do if we really want to compare contents is to use the public accessors to really get the attribute values. So we can say p1. So if you say p1 dot get x, what should that be? Three. p2 dot get x, what should that be? Also three. They should be equal. So that should be true. And then let me use another color. P2 dot get y. P2, uh, sorry, this should be P1 dot get y, I believe. Okay, I'll fix that typo on the slide as well. P1 dot get y should be 4. And also P2 dot get y should be 4 as well. So that'll be 3, uh, also 4 and 4. Right? So that, that means equals equals should really give us true. And then we are using conjunction. So overall, it's going to be true. All right, so that's about the first test, right? The detail tracing. Let's move on to the second one, the second test. For the second test, we are now going to focus on just the point V2 over here, right? That one has the overridden version of the equals method, right? Let's now highlight it. Let me use orange over here. So this is the version that we're going to work on, right? This is the version we already explained earlier in, de uh, in detail. I'm going to assume that you do have some famili uh, familiarity with it. Okay, let's take a look. So let's see here. So we got uh, P3 and also we got P4. Both of them got the dynamic types point V2, both of them, right? Over here. Let me just make a notes over here. So this will be the dynamic type. This will also be the dynamic type for P4. Okay, just keep that in mind. And similar as before, uh, just before that, let me just put in 3, 4, and also 3, 4. So 3, 4, and also 3, 4, right? This one should be easy. Comparing P3 equals equals P4, that should pass, right? Just like before, right? They are different objects, and we are asserting false. And also P4 equals equals P3, that should be false, and we are asserting false. Check, okay? That's easy. And you can also try this, assert the same P3, P4, which will boil down into P3 equals equals P4. Also, you can try assert the same P4, P4, P3, I believe. That's a comment, right? And equals, equals, that should also give you uh, also failure because it's going to evaluate to false, okay? Let's now take a look at uh, the next one. What if I want to do assert true and then P3 dot equals P4, okay? Now we need to look at the context objects. The context object is exactly P3 over here. What's the dynamic type for P3? Dynamic type for P3 is exactly over here, okay, which is point V2. And for point V2, it's going to call this version of the, uh, this overridden version of the equals method. And if we do P3 dot equals P4, so basically let's uh, think about what's going to happen, okay? P3 dot equals P4, we're going to run the various uh, if statement here, but let's just double check very quickly. P3 and P4, they are not pointing to the same objects. So that means the first one, we're not going to return true. We're going to bypass that. And also, the argument is P4, and that one is not null. So we're also going to bypass this return false. Are they have the same dynamic type? P3 and P4, their dynamic type is simply here and also here, the same. Point V2 and also point V2. Dynamic type is going to be the same. So their get class will be the same. So meaning that not equal to is going to be false. So we also bypass this. And then we're going to do the cast as I, uh, as I explained in the earlier part of the module. And then we, what we're going to uh, compare them will be uh, here, X versus X and Y versus Y. So that will be X versus X, Y versus Y. So that should be a search true, should really pass. Okay. So overall, this is going to actually call the overridden, overridden version from point v2 and this is going to return true overall so this will be the block that will be executed and also returned which will be true similarly if you try let me just uh help you a little bit to understand the next one if i try to say p4 dot equals p3 how do we understand this p4 dot equals p3 over here and then it's going to be p4 is a context object what's its dynamic type well, according to the code, it's going to be declared over here, right? That's a dynamic type and also point V2. So that means we're going to follow similar logic as over here. We're going to call the overridden version from point V2. 
So P4 and P3, again, you can see P4 and P3, they are not pointing to the same objects. So we're going to bypass this one here. And also, what's OBJ in this case? The argument should be P3. P3 is actually not null, right? It's definitely not null. So we're also going to bypass this. Are they have the same having the same dynamic type point v2 and point v2 indeed so that's the same so we are also going to bypass this and eventually we're also going to return based on this x versus x y versus y x over here x versus x and y versus y so that's also going to be true right so that's why assert true will also pass all right so hopefully you're okay so far and then if you just try uh, another one if you try assert equals p3 and p4, this is just to make sure you understand that this will simply just boil, this will simply just boil down into p3 dot equals p4, which we just explained. Okay, which we just explained over here. Similarly, if I try to evaluate this assert equals over here, this will just boil down into this one over here will just boil down into p3 dot equals p4 which i also explained just earlier right like uh, over here all right so that's about this second test over here hopefully you're follow following let's now move on to the next one the next one is gonna be a little bit more challenging because i'm mixing the two uh point classes point v1 and point v2 and the conceptual reminder you want to have is the common parents is object class with the default version of the equals method and for point v1 if the dynamic type of the context object happen to be point v1 then we're going to invoke this particular default version of the uh, equals method on the other hand if the dynamic type of the context object happen to be point v2 in that case we're going to invoke this overridden version right that's something you want to uh, remember let me just uh, do something quickly over here so this is a default version oh let me just uh, maybe write over here so this is a default version versus this is the overridden version which one to invoke depends on the dynamic type of the context objects as we explained before let's take a look okay let's now see we what we have we got point v1 uh this oh, we're just declaring so we got p1 and p2 right you can see we got p1 here and also we got p2 over here and then we are creating what's the dynamic type for p1 then dynamic type for p1 is going to be a uh, new point v1 over here let me use maybe rat so it's going to be new point v1 over here so that's the dynamic type versus the dynamic type for p2 is going to be point v2 right you can see exactly how we visualize the dynamic type for p2 and also the dynamic type for p1 over here right it's really important for you to see that okay and let's also fill out the attribute value we got three four three four and also three four three four and also three four okay there's something i would like to just remind it's uh, actually in the comments over here that's something you can also try i already uh, made available to you the source code you can definitely try it out if you simply try to write the following assertion to say assert false for example p1 equals equals p2 you might think this assertion should just fail because p1 and p2 they're simply pointing to different objects but it turns out if you simply write this uh it wouldn't simply compile right that's actually something i mentioned to you earlier in the notes let me see if i can find it okay i'm pretty sure i mentioned that somewhere uh about compilation error let me just bear with me i just want to link to the earlier notes uh, let me see maybe it's here p1 equals equals p2 can I actually find it somewhere okay maybe you can uh, help me out by finding it yourself so earlier in the notes I mentioned that if you got different types of the objects if you try to use equals equals it is going to give you compilation error okay I cannot seem to find it. Maybe it's uh, it's a uh, hiding somewhere in the notes. Okay, I'll, I'll rely on uh, rely on you to actually find it. Okay, but let's just go back to the uh, current example. Okay, the current one. Let's take a look. If I say p1 equals equals p2 because p1 was declared to be point v1, p2 was declared to be point v2. You just cannot compare directly addresses of two different 
uh, objects of different static types, P, uh, point V1 and point V2. Okay, so let me just draw the link over here. You can see here, P1 is was declared to be this type over here, and P2 was declared to be this type over here. Okay, so that's why you just cannot compare them directly. Okay, on the other hand, interestingly, if you try to do the following, if you try to do assert same over here. And over here, you simply pass P1 and P2. This will definitely compile because for assert saying you can take any objects uh, as the two arguments to the method. But P1 and P2 over here assert the same. It will simply boil down into implicitly P1 equals equals P2. So that's why I said I'm pretty sure I said earlier in the module that you you definitely cannot write P1 equals equals P2 directly if they are of different static types, like a declared types over here. On the other hand, if you simply put it into the context of assert the same, in that case, you will boil down into checking P1 equals equals P2. But that's okay. That's something that's to be done by the Java runtime, not by you. If you as a programmer simply wrote this, you're going to get a compilation error, right? So notice the difference over here. It's a little bit tricky, but it's logical. All right, I'll let you study that. Let's now look at the two final assertions, shall we? Let's now look at the first one. If I say assert false over here, let's say p1 dot equals p2. Now, which version are we going to call? Well, now it should be very natural to you. You should really look for the dynamic type for p1. What's the dynamic type for p1? It should be here. So this is dynamic type for p1 over here. Okay, and that should be point v1. Meaning that we're going to, okay, so this tells us that we're going to invoke the default version of the uh, uh, equals method that's inherited to point, uh, point V1. You will boil it down into P1 equals equals P2. In that case, are they referring to the same objects? No, they are not. So it's going to be false. Okay, and so this is default version from object class. Okay, let's look at the second one. The second one, let's say we try to do P2 dot equals P1. Now the context object is different, so we kind of swap the order. So what would be the, um, uh, let's see, let me use the, uh, what would be the dynamic type for P2? It will be exactly over here, right? So that's the dynamic type for P2, which is point V2, right? So for point V2, so that means we're actually going to actually call this version over here, right? That's the default, uh, that's the overridden version for the equals method. If we do P2 that equals P1, so now since we know P2 and P1, dynamically they are simply of different types as we can see from here. So that means eventually we'll get to this point over here. And then when we get to this point, actually we explained a similar example earlier, but I just want to explain one more time. So we are we're actually going to get here. Right, you can see we got P2 and P1. So this will just be, uh, let me just use a different color. So this will be replaced by P2 and OBJ will be replaced by P1, okay? What's P2 that get class? P2 that get class is going to be point V2 and P1 that get class is going to be point V1. Are they the same? They are not the same, meaning that this Boolean expression is going to be true. So that means we're going to hit it and, and then return false, right? That's what's going to happen. So we're going to return false over here, okay? So it's going to be boiled down into p2.getClass. In that case, it's not equal to p1.getClass. According to the definition for the overridden equals, that means it's going to be false, okay? It's very important for you to see that. Okay. All right. So that's about the uh, this uh, this uh, last J unit test. I would like to go over, but I want to show you one more thing before I conclude it. Okay. Let's now go to Eclipse. It's really important for you to see the different versions being invoked. So if you go under the same projects, okay, and then go to test points. Okay. I want you to go to the third one. Okay. So you got the different methods over here, right? test method that we just went through, I want you to go to the third one over here, okay? I want you to put two breakpoints. Uh, actually, one will be okay. Put one breakpoint over here. So we want to step into this one 
and also later I want I want we want to step into this one as well. Since their context objects P1 versus P2 have different dynamic types, this one P1 has dynamic type point V1. So if we step into the equals, which version are we going to see? Number one, and when we put a break, uh, when we pause the execution over here, the dynamic type for P2 is actually uh, point V2. And now if we step into the equals, what's going to be the version that we're going to see, right? That's question number two. Let's verify the answer together. Let's now launch the debugger. Okay, and let's now switch to debug perspective. So now for this line here, and we know that P1, if you see that it's actually even tells you the address over here, point V1, that also tells you what the dynamic type is. If I step into, I should really go to the default version. If I say step into, you can see now the context is the object class and then equals. So now we're invoking the equals method from the object class, right? Okay, that's something I want to show you. Let's now step return. And step over. Now we are facing a different situation. P2, if you move your mouse over, it's dynamic type is actually point V2 over here, right? And then which version of the equals method are we going to invoke? Well, if we step into, it's going to be it's going to be a different version, the overridden version. So now if I say step into, you will see now it's, it is the equals method that's overridden in point V2. That's exactly what we said uh, when, we, when we trace on the paper. Okay, that's really important for you to see. And I just want to verify that together with you on Eclipse. Everything we said on the paper and on the slides and on Eclipse are exactly the same. If I miss anything, I didn't demo on the Eclipse, you should really do it, do that missing puzzle yourself. Let's now stop this, okay? Let's now just go back to slides. Okay, so these are the three test cases I just uh, traced together with you. And the next video, I would like to review the short circuit effects for the logical operators.